Hello everyone, uh, welcome back to part 3 of the uh, assignment 1 walkthrough. So uh, at this point, uh, hopefully your file will look something close to like this, um, with basically most of the line work uh, completed. Now, probably the first thing you will want to do at this point, since uh, most of the line work is done, is actually get that uh, sort of annoying background out of the way. Uh, there are two ways you can actually go about doing this. Uh, one of the sort of easy ways, uh, if you kind of want the sort of boundary of the uh, JPEG to be still visible, if you select the JPEG uh, the same way I did, either by clicking on it directly or using the uh, crossing boundary se selection method like this, uh, usually it's done from you know the lower right to the upper left like that and it'll cross and select anything within you know that sort of boundary area so uh, once you do that you'll you'll see that the ribbon UI changes uh, to a different uh, sort of contextual uh, ribbon and then you can actually toggle this show image uh, setting to kind of show or hide the image after you're done, uh, click on Escape to you know, exit the uh, contextual ribbon command, and then you'll have this, right? And if you ever need it back, then just click on it again and show image to get the image back. Uh, the other method is actually, um, in this case, uh, specifically for this uh, image, I have it here on a separate background layer. Uh, so you, I can actually just hide the background layer uh, if you kind of plan it, plan it ahead this way. Uh, but the sort of difference is that you don't have the sort of outer boundary layer anymore. But that's com this is completely, you know, up to you. All right. So for now, I'll go with the sort of hiding image uh, method. Now it should look something uh, like this. Now, one of the things that you'll notice sometimes is that as you're drawing, or especially when you had the background and these are highlighting things and you see like there's sometimes that you get these artifacts as I'm highlighting and some of the lines start to change uh, don't worry about it they're not they really haven't changed at all uh, if you select them and come out they'll actually go back to you know original state this is more just a display thing so what you can do is actually uh, type region or region all uh, the I believe the default shortcut is REA so if you type REA and enter or spacebar, that basically kind of refreshes everything that's uh, within the boundary of the screen. All right, so uh, if you're seeing some weird stuff going on with your lines or things that you know shouldn't be like that, uh, oftentimes it's just that. Okay, so just you know if it's bothering you, uh, type REA. Uh, one of the other things I'd like to point out is that. <coughs> uh, this is kind of a personal thing, but uh, in the sort of uh, toolbar options here on the lower left, um, personally, I don't like this uh, icon view. Uh, so one of the things I always do actually is I right click on any of them, it doesn't really matter. If you right click uh, and uncheck the use icons selection here, that will change this into a sort of text display, which uh, in my opinion is a lot more helpful. It's just easier to read. It's clear. I don't have to rem memorize what the icons look like. And so uh, this is where you see, you know, make sure that your sort of snap uh, is off. Make sure your, well, grid, you, you can turn on and off depending on your preference. Um, and you can see what uh, what of these sort of which of these options are on or off, and this is the line weight option. So you know LWT, you know usually is a lot easier to kind of remember. All right, so uh, if we look at the setup of this file here, um, and I'll go to the layer manager here, the layer properties manager, up uh, the very upper left button here in under the sort of layers section, which will bring up this interface. Uh, here you'll see now some of these are default layers that you can't uh, delete the zero and the def points are ones that you can't delete no matter what but in general these five one two three four five these five layers are the ones that I've set up and you'll see that here in the line weights uh, I've already kind of 
uh, chosen uh, some line weights. Uh, these are display line weights, okay? These are line weights that will show up in your drawing display um, as you draw them and as you see them. Uh, they are there to help, to help you visualize, and that's exactly basically what this uh, LWT option in terms of showing you line weights does. Now, keep in mind that this is not accurate, okay? Now, when we're sort of on the issue of line weights, uh, Please remember to refer back to our uh, course modules, uh, the AutoCAD Fundamentals, the second portion, 12 to 18. And if you kind of listen to the line weight section, uh, Jeremy does a very, very good uh, explanation uh, regarding that. Okay, so make just keep in mind that the, what you're specifying here uh, at first is really just a sort of display thing. Don't confuse it with the, your plotting output. And that's we will eventually go into you know how to set this up uh, in a little bit, but let's just take a look at this. These are uh, kind of uh, going down, uh, or they're sorted according to line weight. Uh, you can actually change how things are sorted by just sort of clicking on the uh, the sort of category, and so this is sorted by name uh, in you know. Uh, receive, uh, ascending or descending order, you know, depending on what you're choosing. But just for visualization purposes here, I'm clicking on the line weight. Uh, so I know, okay, this is my thickest line weight, which is the sort of cut line of the hill, right? Uh, intentionally wanted to be very thick and heavy to signify the cut uh, of the ground. Cut elements, um, which are the sort of stronger elements that are cut through uh, in the section. Uh, newer elements, railings, and details. So uh, there, this is a one way of doing it. Um, it depends on what kind of drawing you're making. Uh, if you're drawing a section, sometimes it's easier to just, you know, like I described in the earlier video, just gonna try to categorize things according to their thickness uh, or cut near, far, the, this sort of, you know, uh, more visually based system. If you're drawing a, a plan, for example, then it usually will make more sense to actually categorize things by architectural layer um, or architectural elements. Uh, what that means is that if you're drawing you know, a, a wall, then you actually have a wall layer and usually the wall layer in a plan is a strong layer. Right? It's usually a pretty thick line unless it's a, a, a sort of half height wall that you see. Um, so you'll often see basically, you know, walls are done in red and they, they usually have a pretty strong line weight. Um, structural elements like uh, columns, uh, load bearing walls, these sorts of things. Uh, other things like doors, you know, have, are sort of a little bit further down in the hierarchy. Windows are even lighter, etc., etc. So uh, usually you'll find that uh, when you're drawing plans, uh, it makes more sense to do your categorize your layer, layers uh, by the architectural elements rather than this sort of you know uh, near far uh, method. Uh, but you'll kind of find better ways to uh, organize this as you go along. Okay, um, so now you'll see that basically I have five uh, different layers and they, you know, 0.4 millimeters, 0 0.25, 18, 0 0.13, 0 0.005. They're sort of going down um, in, you know, the in, in line weight or in thickness. And so that's a pretty good range of uh, different line weights. At, obviously, you'll still have to try to test plot eventually to figure out, you know, is this the right setting or is, this a, is there something else you need to do? And we'll get to that uh, in a little bit. But for now, uh, I want to come out here and uh, let's say actually try to apply uh, hatches to everything. Now, the same thing, uh, refer back to the fundamentals. Uh, there is a section on the hatch where all the different sort of hatch options are explained very clearly. And so I won't uh, rehash uh, all of that stuff. But for now, uh, the hatch command is here or you can simply type uh, H spacebar which is which will activate the hatch uh, ribbon UI. Now, uh, for the most part, I suggest using the pick points method, which basically auto detects the boundary. Uh, you can choose different uh, patterns from here, uh, default patterns. There's a lot to choose from, uh, some really wacky ones, wood, brick, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, I'm just going to go with the basic ANSI 31 um, 
diagonal hatching here for now. Uh, for some of these elements, they might have been concrete, but I think this is for now, it's just sort of clearer to see. It's easier to adjust the density and um, have it show up correctly. Now, so basically you want to do this on, you know, some of these uh, sort of hatch elements. And uh, one thing that I sometimes do actually before I run the hatch command is that I will actually make a layer for my hatch or e either do that or put it on what you kind of expect to be your lightest uh, element or your lightest layer. So in this case, it would be either the detail layer or I can make a separate layer and you know, make it, um, let's call it hatch layer, for example, uh, just so that you can kind of control uh, the hatch separately. So why don't we just do that? So I'll make a hatch layer and leave it at 0 0.05, which is a pretty thin um, sort of line weight and actually make it the active layer. All right, so then we'll do a hatch, same thing, NC31. Uh, and you'll see as you kind of hover over a closed region, um, AutoCAD will actually auto detect your boundaries uh, if your sort of line is closed correctly, okay? Uh, sometimes if you find that it can't auto detect correctly, either your boundary isn't closed or it's a situation like this, uh, this part where there's like a really, really long sort of uh, elongated boundary line section that's sort of hard to for to auto detect. And there are tricks that you can do. You can sort of draw a short line segment there uh, to kind of break the area down uh, to make auto detection easier for it. But in this case, we just want to hatch that first. Uh, this is some, you know, these are the options. That these are all sort of described in the, um, the hatching uh, video, so I won't sort of belabor that point. I'll change the uh, scale a little bit. So I'll type that in and then use click, uh, type tab to kind of switch out of it. Uh, so you can kind of really see how much, when I change the density, how much the density of the hatch itself changes as well. So you want a good balance. Uh, I think 15 was actually pretty good, at least in this case. Uh, that works for uh, the drawing overall. And set enter. So you'll see now the hatch is applied to uh, the boundary. Okay, so what I'll do is actually just sort of go around um, and do that to this, to this. And you'll notice that I can actually apply the hatches to multiple pieces at the same time. Right, and then when I complete the command, these th three regions will basically be part of the same hatch. Right, so I'll do that to this, and it's really, so if you were kind of drawing uh, your boundaries correctly and they're closed correctly, this should work like a charm. Uh, if not, then you might have some problems in between. Uh, and there are ways to kind of try to solve that as well, All right? So there are some situations like this where, uh, you know, this, uh, if we kind of, if you look at the background image, these are actually dotted lines. They're not really part of the uh, larger hatch. They're not actually meant to be boundary lines. Uh, so in some of those cases, you can uh, either hide them first or just sort of, you know, fill out what needs to be filled out here. Uh, it really doesn't, you know, make a huge difference. Uh, except, you know, like you can see my screen is getting a tiny little bit laggy. Um, but, you know, it still gets the job done, right? Uh, so that's that. Let's see what else. I think I'm missing one here. And not sure if these were. And so if you're not sure, uh, you can always, you know, zoom out, show the image uh, to kind of get a sense for, okay, what were those elements? And are those, you know, things that are meant to be seen? Or are those meant to be hatched? Um, and just sort of check for anything that's really missing. Okay. But if you're happy or you're satisfied, okay, I'm missing those two. Um, and this time I'll just hide the background layer itself. So I'll hatch these two as well. And that little guy there. And I think we're 
just about set. Okay. So the other one is probably like this sort of big ground plane. You can decide whether or not you want to hatch this whole thing or not. But uh, because it's not closed, uh, what you'll probably do uh, is to just basically draw a uh, temporary sort of boundary for it. I don't have my horizontal snap on. Okay, and then trim TR, trim that off, uh, hatch. And uh, in this case, you'll see that, okay, a closed boundary cannot be determined. And so this is where you might actually try the selection method and see, basically kind of see what's up. And sometimes it'll give you slightly sort of wonky results. Um, and if you're getting a really strange thing like I am right now, you'll see that the hatch is sort of, you know, splitting all, all over the place everywhere. Uh, basically what you might need to do is just to kind of like go back, I'll copy this out and sort of retrace it uh, to give it a, a proper uh, boundary, um, if you will. Uh, the other sort of quick and um, easy way sometimes I use, uh, if I know sort of where these elements are, right? So that's a straight line between there. This is just a sort of cor corner turn segment. Is that uh, I'll sort of select these guys out and I'll copy them to the side really quickly, right? Um, and then basically try to close them out uh, here first. And so you'll see I'm kind of using the um, object tracking. Now, one of the ways uh, to kind of ensure that this thing will sort of stay in place or, or this thing will be closed is actually to join them. And the join command is uh, activated by typing J spacebar by default. And then you can actually uh, select uh, things to join. Oops. So for example, that got joined together. Uh, you can select this first and then type J and then start to add segments to it. So in this case, you'll see that the whole thing got joined into one uh, consistent uh, poly. Now, uh, the good thing about polylines is that they all basically guarantee that your sort of hatch operation, if you use pick points, will work regardless. And so sometimes what I do is I sort of do this on the side. Uh, when you're doing the hatch, you probably want to make sure it's not associative, so it's not uh, the hatch itself isn't sort of tied to the boundary, which makes it possible actually for you to move the hatch. Uh, alternatively, you can sort of copy this back into place and then do the hatch. It's really just sort of, you know, up to you. It's a matter of, you know, preference. So I'll move and use that corner. And then at this point, we can do away with that. And then you can actually Oops, zoom in, select that, and delete the boundary. Okay, now this hatch, uh, I don't know, maybe you don't want that one. You can use you know, the concrete or, uh, no, that's not concrete. Uh, <laughs> you can find something else, maybe like the earth hatch, if you're feeling like it. Um, probably change the scale so it's a lot larger than that. You know, so you can sort of experiment and play around with what you think uh, looks good in this case. All right? So that's uh, the hatching. Um, in the next video, we'll uh, start to talk about the line weights and uh, plotting.